this is going to be a shards versus book discussion this isn't going to be a hey don't spend money in raid we're not doing that today but basically this question or this post here by wooden collection 6134 is asking whether it's better to chase champions or build the ones that you already have essentially that's what this is he says i don't really spend money on games but decided to treat myself a bit then there's that 50 dollars 10 lego book pack or the packs for the sacred shards that are roughly the same price at 40 to 50 bucks i was curious if you guys were focusing on getting champs or building the ones that you already have personally i think i'm going to do the lego books for events and then book ninja and kyoku so um, my first initial thought behind everything here is when you're early off in raid it's important to build a roster so you're going to want to chase champions try to get every champion you can in order to increase that roster so you have more options later on you're going to get to a point where you're going to have more champions and uh, lately you guys have been telling me this that you guys have so many champions but not the resources nor the gear in order to really optimize and max them out and make them worth it right i remember uh hwz pulled an acrisia one day and um for like i think a week later i was like hey uh, have you tried acrisia out in hydra and he was like no i don't have the books to really make her perform at the highest capacity yet and for me part of the reason why i end up saving my shards and is this guy purposely taking up the entire me yeah he is all right we can play this game uh he doesn't know i'm doing a video so i'm, I'm talking to you guys anyway <laughs> um well, let's, let's, what's his name busted Men metal one yeah uh part of the reason why i don't end up pulling shards nowadays is because I often will not be able to really utilize them to their fullest potential. So I end up not pulling shards and I just stack resources and works and, and work on the ones that I already have. So that that's like, I, I guess like an end game perspective, but yeah, early on definitely chase champions and then kind of hold back a bit unless there's a champion you really want, but I would save your shards and then work on building those champions you already have. Trooper Fox 83 says the best thing you can buy is the monthly gem pack. Sacreds are super low value. Yes. Um, for the most part, I agree because sacreds are quite expensive. I don't think they should even be 15 bucks. I think 15 is the lowest I've ever seen them. 14.99 or something like that per shard, per sacred shard. And I don't think that's, that's worth it. Um, because more often than not, you end up pulling an epic champion. I've always been curious to see if you were to rework a artifact or anything, if the ascension would also change. I didn't know that before, but maybe we'll find out today. And so we get HP, defense, attack, attack percent. That's huge. That's what I want for Sun Wukong. And it looks like, no, that, that pretty much stays the same. The monthly gem pack is really good. I think for like 10 bucks, you can end up getting 20, 2400 gems. And that's in one month. And that goes a really long way. And there's a lot of value in that. The other thing that I think is really good to be spending your money on is obviously we talked about this, the Forge Pass. If you have the Revival Path, that's an awesome value for a pack. The monthly pack that they sell, it's like 30 bucks if you're on the low end of spending tier, but that has a variety of shards, gems, and energy, a thousand energy. I used to buy those all the time. That's my That was my regular go-to. Hey, real quick, at 3,000 subs, I'm going to be buying a random subscriber a forge pass and currently it's the slayer forge pass which i think is actually one of the best ones that they have available so um you know it's gonna be a random subscriber gonna pull them on stream and then log into their account and buy it for them on stream wooden collection says the guy who posted the op my rng for sacreds is not kind did you notice how once i started playing his let's wait the entire thing out game he stopped playing that like i don't understand what people think you know what I mean? Like, no, 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 hold on. We're, I'm, I'm gonna, I'm gonna make it so that this takes a while. We're bringing in Necrit. How dare you, dude? How, how dare, how dare you? I'm not even gonna try to kill him. We're just gonna let, uh, let's get rid of. Him. Let's keep UDK. We're gonna keep UDK, and we're gonna get rid of Mithrala. That's what we're gonna do. But we're gonna, I don't know who this is, but he, high blessing for him might be good. But Mithrala is really annoying. You get books and sacreds from getting the last rewards in UNMCB in a clan that kills for double max rewards. Yeah. So that's one of the big reasons why everybody always says, hey, you should try your best to do your one key for UNM, CB, and NMCB, and then Brutal also, because you drop your books and your shards from there. That becomes a reliable stream of resource income for the in-game stuff that you are probably going to want. So that's why there's always a big push to do that. Always wondered if forge passes were worth it. In the beginning, I've, I've used gems for masteries, but realized they're better used for energy for events 
Unless it's a game changer for me. Yes. All right, so we're gonna do resist sippy battles. And as you see right here, all support. He thinks he's being smart by taking out my only nuker, but he doesn't know. I got the big brain. I, I purposely did this. And I'm just gonna let this entire thing run. I'm not gonna, you know, let it go on auto. He wants to take up my time in the beginning. I can play that game too. Forge pass I feel is decent value. Top tier crafting materials are a big win. 50% silver and XP booster once you get high enough. Forge pass loses value as your account progresses, but I think they're worth doing occasionally. Yeah, exactly. Have you reached a point where you can pick and choose which one you go for? Yes, just Slayer right now. Bolster is great too, but I have enough for myself. Same thing, I don't really need Bolster anymore. So really it's just Slayer and I think Instinct. Wow, look at that. He left. He couldn't hack it. He started something and he didn't want to finish it. Look at that. The monthly gem pack is the only thing worth putting money into. It depends on your progress. If you actually reach UNM and NM daily, you'll feel buying shards and books is kind of mad because you can get it for free from CB. This is, th yeah, this is another huge point. Once I was able to start doing UNM and NM on a regular basis, I honestly stopped buying shards and books because it was weird for me to know that I could get it for free and then go and pay like 30 bucks for it or, or something like that you know what i mean um that's not to say that if that's what you do you know i'm, I'm not judging you it is what it is it says buy voids then pull them on a 2x if you need a specific epic a progressive chance like the one i'm going right now there's a champ chase pretty much every week you'll get books from pulling shards this guy says yeah monthly gem pack and forge passes and any good offers for energy packs and maybe shard packs if you really want to start spending that's the order of spending for non-whales Please don't buy sacreds, it's outrageous what they charge for them. The books are bad too. $50 for 10 books, 10 books is like one champ, barely. Sacred shards are a horrible value, even if it's 2x, you're gonna get an epic most of the time. The only time I even bother buying shards is when I need something to complete a summon event. Yeah, that makes sense for like a, um, what do you call it? Like a fusion? Then forge pass, then there's some energy packs. If you still feel okay spending money on the game after all that, then book out your existing champions. If after all that you still have the itch or you don't have any champs left to build, then start gambling on shard pulls. As others told you, the only thing that has any value is the monthly gem pack for 10 bucks. Also, if you're a whale or if you're a low spender, what packs that are here do you think are worth it? Like which packs would you buy here? If you're a spender, like what, and like tell me what your budget is and what you're buying on a regular basis. Like I said, I was buying this, the monthly pack, on a monthly basis, and I was buying this on a monthly basis too. I've never bought this. I don't know if this is worth anything. I've always been curious to buy this just because it's always been there and I kind of want to get it out of here. It's like these three are always here unless you buy them, and I've always wanted to buy them just to get them out of the way. I don't think this is a good a good buy. 50 bucks for all these gems. That's, that's, that's how many gems is that? 600, 400, that's a thousand gems, a void shard, three ancients and a sacred. So this is basically this, but 20 bucks more. This was something that I also thought was good value back when I was not really low spending, but when I was still on my pay to win journey, if you want to call it that. I was buying this and I was buying this pretty often. Like I, I would just load up on these. If you haven't spent in a long time, I think it's like a month, a month of no spending, Polarium offers this to you. A really low price so what i would do is probably take the voids probably take this and then the uh tag team tokens 10 bucks i think this is not bad at all now they have any they've got even more um sorry i got distracted uh uh, uh what a, um what am i saying the um uh